Hi, everybody. My name is Maya, and together with Peter, Peter, come say hi. Hi, hello. We're going to be your hosts today of today's webinar, uh, Out Accept Version 6 with Artificial Intelligence. Before we get started, I just want to go over a couple of items of how you can fully participate in today's webinar. So this is what you should see on your screen right now. This webinar is being recorded. You will be able to get the recorded version a couple of hours after this session. Also, you can always click on full screen mode. In the right up hand corner, you will find the icon. We really want to encourage you to participate in today's webinar and to ask questions, as many as uh, you need answers to, of course. Uh, you can do that by, if you hoover down with your mouse, you will see two icons, raise hand and question and answer. If you click on question and answer, this will pop up and you can type in your question at the bottom. We will get it and we will answer those questions. Some we will answer during the webinar, but we have planned some time after the webinar to answer all the questions that you might have. Please, again, I encourage you to ask questions. Take advantage that we are here live and we can answer those immediately. Uh, I just want to say a couple of things about Audax company. We are based in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Ljubljana is the capital city of Slovenia. If you haven't been, you have to come and visit. It's beautiful. Uh, we have been working in the dental, in the field of dental informatics for more than 20 years. We are the leading medical IT company in Slovenia and we develop our own patient management software. But we put a lot of energy into development of uh, clinical applications such as OutAccess. Uh, OutAccess software is sold worldwide. Uh, as you can see, it is used every day in over 90 countries. Um, of course, to have that many clients worldwide, we do need to take care of our clients. And with that, of course, we do need to offer superior technical support. When we talk about OutAccess uh, packages, editions, we're talking about uh, three, OutAccess Super Easy, OutAccess Empower, and OutAccess Ultimate. If we go a little bit deeper, uh, these three packages are all lifetime licenses and you do not need to pay any royalties after. Uh, the, the software works uh, with no limitations. Uh, Super Easy is the most simple package we have with uh, manual tracing analysis and then we have empower which is probably even easier than super easy because it employs artificial intelligence for automatic tracing uh, it's an amazing functionality a major time saver and then we have out ultimate which employs also automatic it has automatic tracing or artificial intelligence but also has a whole bunch of advanced functionalities that really help you out in your orthodontic practice, such as superimpositions, skull growth, VTO, STO, photograph management, document management, analysis types, and of course, database. Agenda for today, introduction, which I'm almost done with. Uh, then Peter's going to take the hot seat. He's going to talk about, he's going to show the software, how it works. He's going to talk about tracing with artificial intelligence, uh, skull growth, VTO, photograph layout, superimpositions. He's also going to take some time to show super easy and empower. Uh, at the end, just going to, uh, I'll come back and say a couple of final thoughts um, about the software. And of course, again, we're going to take time to answer any all questions that you might have, so please send them to us. So, Peter, I invite you to take the hot seat. Let us see OutAccept version 6 at work. Thank you. So, thank you, Maya. I close that and I will uh, run version 6. We're going to talk later about uh, other packages. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please ask, uh, and uh, we'll try to answer as many as possible. So when we start uh, out of this uh, uh, pops up. And um, what we have here is um, a ribbon, and there are some uh, tools on the top. 
and these urban changes regarding of uh, where we are at um, at, uh, at what work at what module in the software and right now I'm in the patient module so I would like to to enter a patient and add some documents and uh, I do so by clicking uh, new patient and I will say uh, Jenny Jenny Doe it's always Jenny Doe or Julie Doe or whatever she was born on first of first of uh, 02 uh, she's a female I can add phone number, GSM, additional, additional information, so cell phone um, address and so on. When I save the patient, what I get is a patient here on a list of patients. It could be thousands of patients there. We have cases when uh, people have um, uh, eight, 10,000 uh, patients, really a lot. Uh, we imported them from a uh, previous system that they had and uh, here what we have is a container where I put my documents, uh, for example, images, uh, DICOM files, whatever. And uh, I'm going to open a folder here and uh, I will drag and drop a lateral x-ray to the stage, to this container. I will say it's a lateral x-ray and I will put it here. And now it's, um, it's on uh, the stage. It's initial stage. I could add a stage. It could be intermediate, it could be final stage. So I organize my documents according to the time when they occurred during the treatment. Now, what I can uh, add, of course, um, are some images. I will add this image, and this is lateral photo with no smile, and uh, it's there. Now, I want to create an, a cephalometric analysis. So I click this lateral x-ray, uh, by the way, if you don't like the skin, you can change it. Uh, some people prefer black uh, skins. They say it looks more professional uh, when they use such software with, uh, with uh, uh, the patients. So we have different skins, uh, colorful, which I'm using right now, then dark, which is all black, and there is light. Uh, but I prefer that colorful, um, uh, the, the colorful one. So I click the image. And now I'm going to create a new analysis. Now I'm put uh, in Canvas, and you may see that I have one of the analysis types, one of the methods that are used worldwide. For example, Ricketts, uh, then, uh, I don't know, McNamara, then Downs, and the others. I have one select. The one that is selected here is the one that I uh, am using the most frequently. And this is the one they, I, I used the last, um, the last time. And uh, all the points are put on, uh, on the canvas here. I don't need that, so I can make this canvas bigger. I can resize those windows in, uh, in a way that I want. And I have four different ways of tracing this radiograph. One would be to, to use uh, group preposition. Now you see that uh, all the points are spread around, and there is um, uh, mannequin around the point. So I, if I grab the corner of that mannequin and I place the points close to the way where they should be. So this is manual tracing. And then I manually place points. Now I'm going to select Sela Turtica and put it here. You can see here that uh, Sela Turtica is selected. I could, I could say, okay, uh, we want to know more about Sela Turtica is this and this and this. Then I have Nazion here. I place Nazion, so it's Nazion. So it's a helper. And uh, this helper is uh, very useful when you start, but later you'll be, you will know what, what is what point and you'll be able to do that much quickly. So when I move a point, I'm going to close that. When I move a point, I grab the point, I move it. What I see is that they change color. And this is uh, how I know that this point, particular point was placed. Of course, I do that one by one. And uh, at the end uh, of the day, I, uh, I uh, have the tracing and I do the print. So this is one way that I could do. The other way would be to do a sequential tracing. So I could start in uh, the group preposition or sequential tracing. I have a list here. Uh, some points have already been moved, the ones with the tick, and I will place the other ones. So I say zygomatic orbit rich. Then I go to Bazion. Then I go to Articulari. And I have a 
uh, PNS, ANS, A point, B point, Pogonion, Nation, Menton. Then I have some, some additional helper geometry, uh, which uh, helps me to place uh, tangent gonion. Then I have R3 point, Ricketts R3 point. Then I have Andramus here. And I go to incisors and I click uh, those uh, 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 points there. I'm very quick because I did that several times. Let's say 1,000 times before, before that. But on this image, of course. But I am not faster than uh, the, the way of tracing that I will show you later. Now I placed all the points. Now I'm going to, to switch on the report view. You can see that um, soft tissue doesn't fit perfectly to, to, um, to the outline, for example, of, uh, of the profile of the silhouette. So I need to do some adjustments. I, here I can add a point. I can go like this with a double click. I add some points. I, I, I can zoom in with, a, uh, with a, my mouse uh, scroll. OK, this one was not a good place. I have something like this. And uh, now I'm done. Uh, so what I can do, I can uh, make a print, for example, one pager. And uh, we can also create a PDF, or of course, save this to my documents. Now, when this is saved to the documents, uh, some additional documents were created. So I have here an, an analysis, University of Ljubljana. I can add some additional notes here. For example, note one, note one, okay, it's there. And you can see that attached to that analysis, there is uh, a tracing, there is uh, a PDF report. I can show it here. I can even copy it to clipboard. And if I start, for example, Word, that's an external application, I can copy paste that, Control V, and my report is uh, now inside uh, the, the Word. I can uh, use it for creating other uh, documents, an offer or something, I can uh, go on, for example, to this, and I can also uh, copy that to clipboard. So the tracing itself can be copied to the clipboard and uh, sent uh, directly to uh, Word. Uh, one thing which is uh, great here is that if I resize that, uh, it will always be smooth. So this is these are vector curves and they will always be smooth. You can uh, make it uh, even, I don't know, bigger, one, one meter times two meter, it will always be smooth. And I will, I will use some tools here to position that to, to the first side, but this is more, um, more these are to tools developed in, in Word. So you can always copy paste uh, anything to, uh, to other applications. Now let's go back. Now I, I have that uh, analysis done, and I would like to show you the fastest way to, to create the tracing. So I will select again lateral x-ray, I will uh, select new analysis, and the points are put uh, to, to the canvas. And before we used group preposition and sequential tracing, but watch now, I'm going to click automatic tracing. Now I'm waiting. Look my hands, I do nothing, and the points are put there automatically. They, they all change the color, they are all placed where they should be. And if I do not agree, I can always change some, some, uh, some places and uh, say, okay, uh, this is what I want. So uh, when traced automatically, we always have a possibility to, to do changes. And if I switch on the report, uh, it's something like this, and of course, I can make a print, and I have the results in a matter of seconds. Uh, you probably noticed some icons there. Uh, this is analysis icon, this is growth icon, and the, this is a VTO icon. And uh, I'm going to do a growth projection, and uh, I will click that. 
and the uh, software takes a look at the, um, the elements that are needed and will place automatically additional elements which are needed for that projection and uh, it changed the color and what I do is I, uh, I define a skeletal age and uh, I will add a, a forecast age for example 14 years so uh, there will be four year uh, growth projection and then I click calculate and uh, it's it's uh, it's calculated so that uh, the skull in red is uh, four years older I mean the tracing is four years older than the blue one uh, this is the methodology developed by uh, Ricketts and uh, he he has a special way of doing that it's I don't know 200 steps but for a computer it's very easy to do otherwise to do a manual uh, growth projection side I think you need about two hours three hours to do that of course we can open and close also actual uh, uh, facial axis so I can uh, open it a little for up to five degrees and I can close it and it depends on uh, on the patient so the facial axis facial axis can be opened and uh, and closed let's put that to zero and uh, what we have here is also a possibility to show uh, different parts of uh, of the growth so for example um, this is nasion basion line aligned at uh, uh, center of cranium this is uh, nasion basion aligned at uh, uh, nasion uh, nasal line aligned at uh, ans and xipm aligned at uh, uh, protuberance uh, menti of course i can uh, create a, a pdf report as well i can print it it is uh, something like this and I can even do a print uh, where the size is as it is in um, in uh, in life so in natural so if I say actual size here uh, when I print that that it, it will be one centimeter on the paper it will be one centimeter on the skull of the patient I can create a print I will not do that uh, I just uh, I just close that so the whole paper looks something like this from here, we can go on to the VTO. Uh, now I'm in VTO, and uh, if I move some points or tissue, I, if I hover over tissue, you can see that it changes color. So if I go over here, I can move it around. And this is the movement that's been done. And of course, I can always for example, click on add a bigger chart here, and uh, you'll be able to see that the measurements are changing. If I change uh, the position of the tissue, uh, some measurements which uh, depend on the position of that um, of the tissue will uh, will change. You can also create your own uh, own um, measurements like this. So delta boxes with wiggle charts. Uh, so that you will be able to uh, customize your uh, VTO goal. Uh, we'll uh, do that in a separate webinar. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have that, I think, in the middle of uh, January. Uh, you can do also the rotation. So you can do something like this and so on. Uh, one thing which is uh, important is that I can double click I can reset that back so if I make a mistake or something I can I can reset that uh, situation back of course I can add a photograph to to my um, video and I will use this one and uh, I will add the center of rotation to this point I will place that uh, on uh, on the nose it's pure coincidence that this uh, face fits exactly to, to uh, the tracing. Usually you will get something like this or something like this. So you need to resize. I just grab the corner and I will fit that inside, inside, that, uh, inside that tracing. I can, I can move that around, but okay, it's, it's quite okay. Uh, now I say, uh, it, it could be a little transparent if I want. I don't want to have it transparent. And uh, what I want to do right now is uh, I want to do the prediction. 
I'm not, I'm engineer, I'm not an orthodontist. I, I think that results are not going to be very perfect. Uh, but we can uh, later show you some, uh, some uh, uh, better results, real, real results. So what I have here is an image from, uh, from before. This is uh, uh, this one, and this is the image after after my, uh, I don't know, surgery and orthodontic treatment and, and everything. Uh, I know the lady, she's, um, she looks better without, without my uh, uh, corrections. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a real case example. Of VTO. So what we have is uh, this one. We have a surgical case. So this is initial photo. This is a surgery plan. And here maxilla was uh, sent forward a little and mandible was set back and uh, chin was slided as well. And uh, these are the results. So this is initial photo. This is prediction done by uh, audax -Sef. And this is final results after the surgery. And it's quite similar. You know, I, I'm not encouraging you to, to show this to your patient. You know, you, you should, um, you should um, think about uh, how how patient could feel if uh, the result was not according to what software predicted. But uh, you can get uh, a clue of where your treatment is, treatment is heading. Uh, one, one, one more thing that uh, I want to show is that you can make from this uh, image to this image, they, they are both done by uh, Audaxef, you can make a um, um, transition uh, which can be shown to the patient. So this is a movie. I'm going to show you a movie because it takes some time for the software to calculate that. Uh, so um, let's uh, see. So this is initial and when you go to the second, um, second stage, uh, it is something like that. You can always compare two different uh, situations in, in your mouth in, uh, in that way. Now I'm going to close that. I have another case which is more interesting than uh, this one. So it's, uh, it's something like this. So from initial, initial status in, in the mouse to the final status, it would be more, more um, beautiful without uh, the arc behind, uh, behind the teeth. And um, you can make a, a transition from uh, initial to the final uh, phase of the treatment and uh, show this to your patients. They will be amazed, you know, they will see uh, how good job you did. And also parents who usually are economic buyers, they will see that there is a good result. So this is a very cool presentation tool. You can show this also to your uh, future patients and uh, what, what you can do. And um, uh, they, they really like uh, such a functionality. So it's a movie maker inside AudoXF. I will not show you how to do that, but um, if you buy the software, if you purchase that, you get that inside the software as well. So now what I have here is, um, is an, uh, a patient uh, with the video done, with everything. And if I save that uh, to my documents, I, another document will be created. So another analysis, another document will be created. And we will, um, we will uh, check what are the results. Um, this can, everything, all the reports, everything can be customized, can be uh, color changed, fonts change, everything. With version uh, 6, we even uh, added functionality that you can uh, ask for your own report with your own, um, with your own logo and everything so that um, uh, it fits to your documentation, so the report fits to your documentation. If I go back to the documents, you can see that I have here uh, the one that I set, it's note and it's one, it's, it was done manually. This is something that uh, has uh, analysis, growth, and VTO inside this document and several different documents attached. So what we have is this, we have the document, uh, the report, info box, and we have some growth documents here as well. Uh, for example, I show, did show you that before. Uh, we have also some uh, VTO reports and this is everything which is connected, uh, which is connected to that um, uh, 
analysis uh, automatically. Now I'm going to add some additional photos. I'm going to show you quickly some uh, layouts. Okay, let's go here. I will select these uh, images and drag and drop them to, to uh, the stage. I will go to layout and uh, these images, we just drag and drop them. We don't know what type of images are. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this one to this position and upper arch. Now, uh, lady's not smiling. Uh, she was uh, asked to smile. Actually, she's smiling all the time. And uh, here she was asked to be serious. Now we have this and this and this. Okay, now these images know exactly what type of images are. This is additional uh, image. We don't need that. We can, uh, we can delete that from all images, so it's not there. Uh, but if I choose another layout, for example, this one, uh, this, is, this one's according to ABO, I get something like this. I can print that. I can copy paste that to another document. I can edit a little that. I want to have, for example, that image in uh, in a format uh, 3 to 2 and I have something like this and now I'm not very satisfied because I want to have the same uh, head size so I will align the two I will align this one and this one let's do let's select that and I'm I'm offered a tool so I align that on the bottom of the chin top of the head and this image will, will, be, will be bigger. So this is really high resolution image. If you print that, it will, uh, it will, really, it will really, all details will be seen there. Um, I can save that to stage. And uh, if I go to documents, I can, you can see that uh, it's on, on this stage and it's always available. And if I click on that, you can see what images are inside. You can even uh, select one and place it here if you want to have it here and so on. So it, you are very flexible in, in uh, what you want to do. Now I will um, go to uh, superimpositions. I will skip working with, uh, with how to create an analysis type because it's a lot of work there. I will later show you some, some small things and then, then we'll go to, to super easy. So let's quickly uh, do a superimposition. I will go to Mark because I have here two analyses. Uh, they are both Ricketts analysis and I want to do a superimposition. So I simply grab this one and drag it over to the first analysis, which is an initial. And um, I will, I will um, uh, get um, automatically the superimposition of, um, of uh, rickets. And I have here different reports. I can double click on that. I can get the rickets report. I can print that. Or, of course, I can go back to documents and uh, open this superimposition and work, uh, work on it. I will, th this was done automatically, okay? You can, uh, add whatever uh, you can predefine ev every document that you want to have you can predefine it and when you click save it will be automatically created what i would like to show is one way of creating uh, superimposition without tracing uh, so i will switch off the tracing uh, now i have uh, two uh, radiographs two tracings uh, the initial is white uh, is red the, the second is white and um, i will do a cranial based superimposition without any tracing. So I'll do that manually. According to uh, ABO, they, they request actually, um, they request um, uh, uh, superimposition according to stable structures. It's the easiest way is to show that on, on uh, cranial base. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I will switch off uh, the tracing and uh, I will create a link. And uh, what you notice here is that this image is much bigger than this one. That's because they come from different uh, machines. And uh, I will use the calibration so that I will make them the same size. Uh, one thing 
uh, that I selected is that I position that one freely over the second one. Um, the stable structure after the sixth year of growth, so at kids at, uh, who are six year old is uh, with, um, within um, Sela Turtica, is the intersection of frontal wall of uh, Sela Turtica and uh, climate process here and uh, I'm going to place that point uh, of rotation to this point. This is called Walker point and uh, I will go out and now I need to place this one to Walker point to that on that image. So I, if I go like this it's no good because uh, it's not transparent and I don't know what point is there behind. So what I go, what I do is I, I will select uh, the uh, transparency here and make this this one transparent. So now it's transparent and I am actually moving the second analysis over the first one and now both points are aligned. I will uh, switch on the transparency. Now I need to do the rotation but I don't know what uh, kind of rotation so I will switch on the radiograph, uh, radiograph color and this helps me. I can add some transparency okay and now I will superimpose cranial base on on uh, on top of uh, on, on top of each other so something like this so I will place those stable structures that they they uh, overlay so they that they are aligned now I made um, uh, cranial base superimposition and I'm happy with that of course you can always uh, switch on uh, layers with, uh, with uh, that re um, tracings. You can uh, make uh, this image transparent, transparent one and the other and you get only tracing. You can compare points. You can export that to Excel so that you, you can do a comparison and um, uh, you, can, uh, you can have it uh, also for other, for example, for maxilla and for mandible. Okay, now I'll go back to, I will not save that, but I'll go back to Jenny again. And uh, what I'd like to show you now is again how quickly we can do the tracing. So we, I clicked lateral x-ray, I clicked uh, new analysis, automatic tracing, and if an image is good, I just uh, click print here and that's it. So I, in a few seconds I have this, uh, this analysis done. This is due to artificial intelligence we are, that is built inside the software. We are even uh, working on um, having PA, uh, posterior anterior images uh, done in that way. So we have one uh, project about this and uh, we will uh, we will uh, try to uh, even uh, get better results with uh, with automatic uh, tracing. Uh, we'll add some additional uh, additional points. And uh, one one thing, this is very tedious job to do uh, such tracing. It's all done manually. So how does Audaxef work? Audaxef has inside an analysis type modeler. Uh, so you can model or we can do that for you your own analysis type or you can use one of existing and uh, do a remodeling of that existing analysis type. Uh, almost every analysis type can be done within uh, a few hours so uh, there is a modeler which works in, in the following way. I will go to design here, I will uh, create a point and another point here and another point here. I will add a plane which is from here to here and uh, if I move the point you can see that the plane is moving um, according to the design, uh, to the intent which was built into that design. If I say for example let's make a parallel plane to this one through this point and if I move this one, this one will always be parallel. I, I could add a plane here and add a point on a, on a cross section of the second and third plane and you can 
uh, you can see how it always is on the cross section. And what we need to do is just to add some uh, measurements and, for example, angular measurement. Okay, between this and this, I want to have this one. And if I do uh, some movements there, then then uh, they they move. For example, if I have uh, one point, uh, the second point, the third point, I I name this one uh, this one Sela. This one would be Nazion, and this one would be uh, A. If I place a point to this position, then I place this to close to Nazion, and I place this one here. Uh, this will be the angle SNA. And what I need to do is just to grab all those measurements, the right ones, and to put them on the paper. And that's exactly how all that set works. So uh, we, we have, of course, some advanced functionalities about that so that we can create virtually any analysis type and uh, additional reporting. So if I switch on all elements, it looks really crowded. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot of stuff there. But when it's neatly placed on the layers, it's, it's perfect. So I will switch off all elements. I will switch off uh, the report or okay, the report here. And I can add floating norms. That is um, harmonic box uh, first developed by Zegner Hassan. It was used by uh, Bacchetti as well uh, on, uh, on uh, kids. And uh, I can switch on uh, wiggle chart. You've seen that before. Uh, I can add measurement tables so that uh, all the measurements are there at uh, once. Uh, then one thing is very useful is info boxes. Uh, you can have an info box there which uh, shows you quickly some information regarding the regarding the, some angles. If you are not sure what angles are there, you just double click on that and say show measurements X. So I have SNA, SNB, B, and so on. And of course, if I uh, for example, move Nazion here. I want to place it here because it's, uh, I don't know, here. You can see that they change color. This is, uh, this shows you how far from mean value inside, um, uh, inside uh, one, two, or uh, three standard deviations outside of the, the mean value uh, that measurement uh, really is. So this was quickly what I wanted to show you to you about uh, Audex F Ultimate. Again, with a, with a click of a button, all the points are placed there. Of course, we have another software. It's called uh, it's called uh, Super Easy and Empower. I will start it. it has a little different design. The intention was that it is really easy, you know, and this is how it looks like. Basically, this is the same software as AudexF Ultimate. We just stripped it down and put some uh, put some makeup on on it. Uh, but um, you can see if I hover over some uh, functionalities that are depicted here, for example, create an analysis. There on the top left corner here, it's the same if I click new here or if I say create new analysis. Here we enter patient name, calibrate the image and so on. So I will create a new analysis. I will use this radiograph and I'm put on, uh, it's put on canvas and uh, the system is very smart. You can use those uh, tools up there, but System suggests, it says, enter patient name first, okay? Okay, well, then I enter the patient name, but how to do that? If I click help here, so I click that help, um, a help pops up. Uh, so if I'm on enter patient data, here is enter patient data, and there is a movie on how to do that. I can click there. It's 19 second movie, and um, it uh, shows you how to do that. So I, I click that patient here, I uh, add some data here, and, um, and I'm done. So we have here, I don't know, 20 movies, uh, which are very short. We wanted to make them 10, 15, 20 seconds long. And uh, I'm going to, to add a patient name here. I'll say Jenny, Jenny Doe. Uh, she was born on uh, the first, first of, first of, first of, oh, 
three female image date it's yesterday i say done okay now it says do the calibration okay i can calibrate the image by clicking this and this and say this is 25 millimeters we can add all the calibrations of our images to our to a database and if the same size image occurs we can be pretty sure that it comes from the very same x-ray machine and that the magnification is the same now what i'm going to do is uh, trace image automatically so i i'll click that button and software does the, the tracing for me. So what I need to do is uh, check the report view. I can show the tracing points. I can do some changes if I want. Uh, if not, then it's okay. Uh, and of course, I can uh, print the report and save it to, to uh, uh, the file. Uh, super easy and empowered. They have no uh, no database behind. You just save those um, those files. I will save one to the desktop. So if I say save, now it will become a file on the desktop. So this one, and with a double click, uh, Super Easy or Empower will uh, open it. The difference between Super Easy and Empower is just that in Empower there is uh, artificial intelligence added which helps you. Uh, to to do the tracing automatically, otherwise you need to do that uh, manually. So I um, finished my part of the presentation. Uh, probably there are questions. I don't know. Oh yeah, Oof. a lot of questions. <laughs> we, we we will answer that. Maya, can you can you make a um, uh, quick? Uh, a copy of the question exit and, get, uh -huh. and exit and uh, then i'll ask you for uh, for uh, I, i'll go and uh, make a copy of the questions later so uh -huh. so, so you want I, I i will um open my i will open that powerpoint we have a few slides to show maya will maya will talk about we'll talk about this final talk and I, i'll show and get that okay thanks peter for that great presentation uh, this is going to just take a couple of minutes. I want to talk about just some final thoughts about what to look for when you're deciding to pur purchase your orthodontic software and uh, that it should be beneficial for your orthodontic practice. Of course, uh, the software should fit your needs. It should help you work better, faster, and more efficient. It should be a time saver, which AutoXF is because it employs artificial intelligence and uh, automatic tracing does the work for you. Also, a very important uh, thing that we look for is uh, the pr besides the top quality of our software, at Audux, our number one priority is to deliver superior technical support. Uh, we do that no matter the distance between us, no matter the time zones between us. Uh, we do that quickly, and it's almost like we're in the office there helping you out with your technical issue. But what we do need to encourage is that you communicate with us, that you send us emails, that you send us your questions, uh, and we will help you with those. Uh, also, we do online trainings. We have a, a self-instructing toolkit uh, to help you with uh, learning how to use the software. Uh, Peter mentioned before, if you want to create your own analysis type, we can help you with that also. But again, communication between uh, Audux and our clients is extremely important and we want that to be fluent and we will get back to you with any um, questions or answers that you, that you need. Uh, and the third point I want to point out is development. Uh, Audux Ceph is constantly being developed. Uh, there's constantly added new functionalities, um, new enhancements in the software. Uh, it's not a dead software. It's being developed all the time. And your feedback and your suggestions are very important to us because we do acknowledge those in future releases. So actually, you as uh, users of the software, uh, you are the ones that can influence the development. 
Um, there's always someone here that you can talk to about the software, either how to use it or technical issues or how to purchase or whatever. It is uh, important that you know that we are here for you. Uh, this is the last slide. On it, you can see uh, our website and also our um, uh, email address. Please check out our new website. All information is on there. Also, future webinars. Uh, Peter and I always put uh, the future webinars that we are going to host. You can find those on the front page. Peter, did yeah, you print? I, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, our questions. Some, some, I printed some questions. Um, also, just one more thing before you go to the question. If you want a one-on-one -on -one demonstration of the software, just to make it more personal and, you know, we can show you the software online through Zoom, uh, please contact us and we'll schedule a meeting. Okay, so, okay, we'll first uh, close that and uh, we'll stop sharing. Stop, no, stop, stop sharing. Okay, so here we are, back. Um, the, the, this computer there, uh, which is my, my computer has no camera there, actually it is, but it's switched off. So we have some questions. We have um, um, about the pricing, pricing question. Okay, what, the, the, the pricing can be found on, on the web. Uh, please also check if there is a reseller in your country. Uh, if there is a reseller in your country, there is no web shop there uh, usually, and um, and uh, he will give you he will give you um, uh, uh, an offer. But uh, just for information, uh, Empower uh, and Supervisi are uh, one is one thousand five hundred. The other is 750 euro, and um, uh, ultimate version is um, uh, comes at uh, the price 2,250 euro. Uh, then the next question for an upgrade. Well, it depends on what you have. If if you are on the maintenance, uh, then the upgrade comes at the lower price. So we encourage you to ask us. I have your name, uh, Dr. Johnson, we have your name. We will uh, contact you after the webinar and we will personalize the, the upgrade price there. Then we have uh, uh, Dr. Nguyen asks uh, what kind of uh, computer is needed uh, for the software. So uh, there is also a web uh, uh, explanation what you need for the, in order to run the software. Uh, Audaxef is not an application which is graphically intense, which needs a really good computer. I work with a computer with, at home which is uh, 13 years old and software works perfectly. Uh, it's very good to have a, a good operating system, the one that's supported, but uh, the more than computer, we what would like to, you to have is a big monitor, so to have a, a bigger resolution and your work will be, uh, will be easier. Okay, uh, okay, image uh, format supported. Uh, we can import all, all uh, the formats, so raster formats, BMP, PNG, uh, then we have um, DICOM formats are supported as well from any machine. And when uh, importing an image, uh, DICOM image, it will create also a patient, so you don't need to type that inside. So all the images are supported. How long does it take to do online training? Can it be done more times? Yes, we usually do the, the training more times, let's say two times, one hour, one hour and a half, and that's it. It's a very steep learning curve. Uh, we also have a self-instructing uh, tool and uh, we, can, uh, we can send that to you so you can read that through. It's not a manual. When you go through that, when you read through that, you'll be able to, to work with the software. So um, no problem. Then how long does it take to do analysis uh, method? I don't know, three, 
three hours, something like this, that. It depends uh, how complex uh, the method is. And uh, about uh, it also, uh, the problem is description. If there is a good description of on what you want, uh, then it's uh, easier to work. Because some, uh, for example, there are three different ways of um, uh, tracing uh, mandibular plane. Uh, so you need to tell us which one, you, either from menton to gonion to tangent gonion or from gonion to gnation or what. So we would like to know such, uh, such things and then we can do that. Then licensing. Um, do we have uh, one year licensing? We had that one year licensing uh, before the version 6. Uh, people did not decide for that a lot, so we said let's uh, make it simple. So our licenses are all lifetime. So all lifetime licenses, that means that uh, when you buy the software, uh, you, you get, um, you get uh, a license, uh, then you get, um, then you get um, uh, technical support, then you get all new versions inside that new year. If you buy Empower or uh, Ultimate, then you have right to get additional home license uh, for the period on, of one year, if you want to have that. And uh, all the licenses are floating, uh, which means that uh, you can uh, put it on one computer and uh, you can run it on that computer, but you can run it also on other computers in the network if that license is, uh, is free. So, if you, for example, have one license, you can run one license in network at, at uh, the same time, so concurrently. Okay, we have uh, automatic tracing and, um, um, hold on, I wrote that down. Automatic tracing is available with uh, uh, all X-ray machines or need certain machine. It's for all machines. So if you have, I don't know, uh, Plan Mecca, Instrumentarium, if you have uh, Genoray, if you have uh, Sirona, whatever machine you have, I probably didn't uh, tell all the machines, but it works. It works. Uh, so if there is an, a good X-ray, it will find those points. Although the question is very, very good, because uh, if artificial intelligence doesn't know about uh, certain specifics, it can become confused. Uh, it's, like, uh, it's like people, you, you don't know what to do, you know, and uh, in, a, in a new situation. And uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't matter. We check that with uh, most, uh, uh, practically all the machines at the end, it works really good. It works really good. Okay, there is um, study cost analysis. Uh, okay, it was not mentioned, it can be done. Uh, we will develop in the future that you'll be able to put inside, it's not that far future, uh, you'll be able to put inside an STL and then do the tracing. I can show you uh, how this can be done. So I will, um, I will share my screen. Again, I will exit this one. And I will um, run advantage again. I think I have a, a case there and we'll, uh, we'll do that. Now it's only in 2D, uh, but what we will do, so we'll go to Jenny, and I will add an image there. So, for example, clay model. This one is now obtained from, uh, from an image, on-screen image of uh, um, clay model. Uh, but we will support that you will import the STL, uh, do such an image, and do, the, and do the, the tracing. Now, what I'll do is I will click here, and I will do an analysis on that, and I will uh, select another, what we have here, Baldi Schwartz, Schwartz Korkhouse, okay. We have really a lot of uh, these analysis types. There are on this list only, I don't know, 15, 20, I don't know, but we have about 200. So uh, just ask and uh, we probably have one uh, uh, that fits your needs. 
Now, I have to do the calibration. So this will be automatically when, um, when uh, STL is imported. I do the calibration, I do it from here to here. Uh, now manually, it is uh, 65 millimeters and I will uh, sequentially trace those points. Uh, so this is KMX and I go one by one. And I will get some indexes, some measurements there. Uh, the first uh, quadrant that I do is uh, one. Then we'll go to the second. Now I'm basically doing uh, Bolton. This time, then I have um, the third. I'm not a specialist for that, so if I'm not placing the points correctly, please do not mind. I'm just showing uh, the way how uh, this uh, can be done. And uh, I'm almost done. I have to place one four here, one four here, two four here, then I have one six. Two, six. Then I have four, four, three, four, four, six, three, six. Now I'm done. And uh, I can uh, change transparency a little to something like this and uh, switch on, for example, Bolton report or uh, Schwartz Korkow Stabilaric report. So here are here are the measurements. So this can be done. We'll be able to do that with um, we'll be able to do that with um, uh, STL, and uh, we are even thinking about uh, automa automating that so that it will be done automatically on uh, on STL model with uh, the same way as uh, artificial intelligence does that on uh, lateral X-rays. Okay, we have more questions. Yeah, there's a third question, and also there's three chats. Three chats. Okay. Three D three D volumetric tomography. No, we don't uh, support that. I don't think we'll do that in uh, near future. We were um, negotiating with some uh, guys to include that uh, inside, but uh, we figured out that. Uh, it's more than tomography, what is needed to be done. I mean, we could include that inside uh, AUDAXF as a, as a module, but the problem is that we would need to do a setup. So we would need to put inside a uh, scan of teeth, we would need to, to extract those teeth, uh, extract uh, uh, the roots of the teeth, uh, make, uh, make them together, scan the face and uh, do all that uh, all together. It's quite a lot of development for that, so we did not go in uh, in this direction. Okay, are there any more questions? Chats over here. I don't have a chat here. Oh, no. So, um, Mac version three D analysis. So that's Hold one on. question. Okay, Mac version. What we we do not have a Mac version. Uh, I understand that some of you are, are using Macs, but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's really a lot to port that to, to Mac. But you can always use parallels and, uh, or you can uh, boot uh, your, your uh, Mac with Windows and uh, use this software on, uh, on Windows as well. can download 3D file into. Uh, Veronica is asking about 3D file, if uh, STL files can be put inside out of Yes, of course, you can put whatever you want files inside. Word uh, documents, PDF documents, any additional documents can be put inside uh, out of And uh, in uh, next uh, release, we'll be able to uh, open it inside out of and do something with that. So do the measurements as uh, you saw that on that picture uh, of uh, study model. So 
Are there any additional questions, Maya? No, looks like that's it. That's it. Uh, we want to remind you that if questions pop up uh, in two, three days, a week or so, email them to us. We will. Uh, we can also set up a meeting and we answer those questions. It's not a problem. Just uh, contact us. Okay. What uh, What I uh, forgot to 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 show, I don't know, is that I'd like mm -hmm. to launch the poll. Yeah, if you can take a I I'd like to encourage you to, to take a minute and uh, answer these questions. I should have done that in, during the answering. So we we get some uh, we get some uh, feedback. feedback from you. So do you uh, want us to send you more information about uh, the software? This is the first question. Uh, then uh, um, about uh, the field of interest. What what the, what are you most interested in? Then uh, do you find such webinar useful? because we are preparing additional webinars. In, uh, in additional webinars, in a separate webinar, we will cover uh, VTO. Uh, and we have another webinar for, for, uh, for superimpositions, because it's uh, really a lot of, uh, oh yeah, that's an additional question there about, uh, is that all about VTO and superimpositions? Yeah, uh, we will, we, so we will make a, a special webinar about uh, VTO, it will be in, I mentioned before, in the um, mid-January. I think it's on our web page already. And uh, then about two weeks later, two or three weeks later, we'll do a superimposition webinar and we'll cover only superimposition. So only growth VTO and in another only superimposition. And you can check our website for the dates for that. Also, they will get invitations for yeah. the webinar. Yeah, yeah. So. so we have quite some, quite some answers. Interesting. It's always the interesting for us. And most of you want additional information. Some not, but OK. Yeah. I, as I, I, additional information about superimposition, 160% of you, about VTO, 70, artificial intelligence, about half, skull growth. Okay, great. It's very valuable for us to, to have such information because we, we then know in what way to develop uh, uh, our software. So if uh, there are no additional questions, I'd like to uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I hope to see you in uh, New Year. And I wish you all the best uh, in, in the year which is coming. Um, and I uh, hope to have you on uh, future webinars of uh, Audex Yeah, We're going to leave that up a little bit if anyone else wants to uh, do the survey. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for watching and listening. Okay. Hope you learned something new. Okay, we did. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you and bye-bye. Okay, bye. bye. Thank you.